why did we uh, do, do we create the term, coin the term polyamory, and what does that mean? Well, for one thing, uh, though all the words that were in existence describing different um, sexual configurations implied marriage. Right. You know, monogamy it, it means you know marrying one. You know, and polygamy means marrying more than one. You know, and and. But there was no term to explain what, how you are if you have multiple lovers, and that was really very important. Um, what Morning Glory was trying to write about was in, was not something brand new and radical. We had been, both of us have always been polyamorous. We just didn't really have a word for it. It wasn't. It's like tribal peoples and villages all over the world are all pagan, but they don't have a word for it. You know, if you ask them, they they say, well. These are our ways, you know. We are the people, and these are our ways, and that's that's where the language goes, you know. Well, it was the same for us. We um, there were times when we tried to find terms to explain it, but it was often easier just to explain it right off the bat. Well, we have an open relationship, or we have lots of lovers, or something like that. And um, it's it's it is a lifetime thing for both of us, even. You know, even when we were kids, uh, it, we never focused on a myth that said we only could have one partner. You know, and 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 we are like total soulmates and complete life partner things in the deepest possible way. I mean, you know, really, you used you, you know, you want your great romance fairy tale story. We're it. You know, we're completely it. But um, it just never, we never imprinted on the idea that there can be only one. And um, it was like the first reading that I ever did, the first, the first stuff I ever read were, were children's stories of the Greek myths. So I never got monogamy because right. from the very earliest reading there were multiple gods and goddesses. You know, and when, when I learned about you know, Christianity and the Bible and Jesus, well, that was just one more. That's all. You know, so well, it was the same thing for, um, for the number of people one may have a relationship with because in these stories of the Greek gods or ancient peoples or tribal peoples, they always had multiple lovers and multiple relationships, so it just always seemed that that was perfectly reasonable if that's what you wanted to do. And so if somebody wanted to have a relationship with only one person, that was cool. That was just like somebody wants to have religion, they only worship one god, okay, that's cool. But it never occurred to us that that was the only way it could be, see? So it wasn't any kind of a radical departure, no big insight, no, oh my goodness, let's open up our relationship, or let's see if we can be polyamorous instead, because we just read this cool book about it, you know, or anything like that at all. It was just like, it always seemed the most natural thing in the world. You love somebody, great, you know, and you, you throw yourself into a relationship, you give your heart, your commitment, you dedicate yourself, you meet somebody else, and you fall in love with them too. Great, yeah, let's have one more. It never occurred to us that if you're going to fall in love with one person, then you've got to somehow abandon person you're already in love with. What's the, where's that at? What's the point of that? It's like saying if you have a second kid, then you got to kill the first one. We don't do that. Not anymore. Does polyamory have to be a relationship? Well, polyamory doesn't really have to be anything that people don't want it to be. Right. Really, I mean, we're not trying to shoehorn people into something. We're right. trying to create an expansive term. You know, people who it was meant to be an inclusive and embracing term, like pagan, you know, basically you know, unless you get some really radical departures of people trying to define it to something that really doesn't work, like, um, you know, um, it's like identifying it with, with things where you can go out and betray your commitments and relationships and, and uh, you know, and, and, and bring home terrible diseases. No, no, we don't really consider that to fit under the category of polyamory. But, um, but we're not entirely comfortable with people wanting to extend it to just include anybody that you just love, even platonically, because, um, you know, polyamory really doesn't refer to the way you might feel about your kids or your parents or people like that. It's really meant to refer to, to people you consider to be lovers. The people you would call lovers, it's meant to say to, we mean it to mean many lovers. Now, what that means to you, though, can vary. I, there are many married couples that are devoted to each other and have been together for years and have no intention to split up who haven't actually slept with each other in years. Their relationship has passed from an erotic into a companionship thing and yet they still consider each other their greatest lover, you know. There are many people 
but I have been actively engaged in, in amorous relationships at one time in my life who our relationships no longer comprise that element, but we still consider ourselves to be lovers, you know, or one-time lovers, you know. I mean, I feel there are times when I've been at gatherings where I look around and there's a number of people in the room are my lovers. Well, I, there, there may be those that I haven't had sex with in 10 years, you know. And, but we have shared something deep and precious. And that, that gives us the right to claim that bond of lovers. So that's really what we meant by polyamory. You know, it doesn't mean, you know, if, if you're a professional, you know, um, prostitute, for example, and, and some of the people in our community are, and it's really very, an, an amazing dedication that they don't consider the people that they might, you know, hire, hire them for a night to be their lovers, you know, in the, in the same way that they consider the people they're in a relationship with. So there are people who are professional prostitutes who have a monogamous marriage, you know, because really they've got enough of, of sex out there and they really need to have something that's just a one-on-one -on -one when they come home in the morning or whatever, you know. So I, 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 we intended the word to be expansive but to have a clear conceptual uh, what is embraced. And it meant to be multiple lovers, who all of whom are knowledgeable about each other in open and honest relationship. Not, not people who have secret assignations that nobody else knows about, you know, or, or secret mistresses on the sly, or illicit liaisons. It was all meant to be open and, and uh, honest. So the, the the way that it came down for Morning Glory to write about this in her major article, Bouquet of Lovers, that she wrote in 1990 for Green Egg Magazine, was that we'd been in a triad marriage for, at that time, eight years with, with Diane, and um, we had all operated all of our lives, and certainly during our time together, with all these concepts in place. But we'd never really articulated them clearly. And we kept encountering people who were struggling with this stuff, who would come to us and see that we were doing this, because we were always very open about it, and wanting to know, well, you know, how do you handle this? Or how do you handle that? You know, what about such and such? And, um, you know, we'd always try to kind of, again, talking our walk, you know, we'd try to, well, this is how we do things. This is what we've learned. And this is how we handle it don't know how you're going to handle it. It's kind of, you're going to have to work that out yourself. And people started to say, well, it was Diane in particular who said, well, Morning Glory, you're, you're always talking about the rules, that people, that that's not according to the rules, or the rules say you should do this and that. Can you just, how about writing an article for Green Egg, and we'll publish it in our Beltane issue, about what the rules are, you know? I said, well, that's a great idea. And it was in the process of writing that article that she had to come up with a word, and we discussed it. So. We wanted a word that said, you know, loving many, or multiple lovers, something in that concept. Well, your traditional way of coining words is to use Latin roots. But in, in Latin, that would be um, multiamory. And it just didn't quite have the ring to it, multiamory. Okay, technically that's correct. But, um, how about Greek? You know, we, we know Greek, you know, and Greek's a cool word to coin stuff in. And it's ancestral to Latin, so I said, well, that would be polyphilia. And, that sounded like some kind of disease, you know? Yeah, I mean, like we don't want to say we're into polyphilia. People would go, Ooh, you know? Um, so, so it was like, well, why not take the best of both worlds and coin a word that embraces both? Because people usually use the word poly to refer to multiple stuff, like polygamy. Polygamy is Greek, you know? Gamos is, is, is Greek for marriage. And, uh, but the word amor, amorous, amor, you know, things like that is from the French Latin roots is also very commonly in use, so it was just polyamory, and it's just suddenly, yes, that was the perfect word, and it just clicked, and we started putting out it, and people said, that's that's it, that's the word, and before we knew it, there were like websites, and chat lists, and books, and articles popping up all over the place, and whole discussions about what does polyamory really mean, and, and the um, Oxford English Dictionary called up Morning Glory to ask for her to give her definition so they could enter in the issue, you know, in 1999.